Yo, what's up guys? Bienvenue, Yo Koso, to another video. And the GNOME 46 desktop environment is now available for public beta. And I'm really excited to check it out with you guys. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. Okay, so I booted the system and it just got me through a few steps asking me where I wanted to install GNOME OS nightly. And this is the first page that I am greeted with after installing the operating system. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on next. Let's see, we have English US. So this is the basic setup processes, location services, doesn't matter for me. Let's just go ahead with somewhere around India, Kolkata. And my full name is going to be A-N-I. Three letters, not realistic, but that's what'll, that's what'll do for the video. Let's set a password for Ani, and I'm just gonna put a very simple password Enough of the jokes about having a stupidly short password as a long password, okay? I did that joke to death on my channel, as did everybody else. All done, we can finally start using GNOME OS, and I love the fact that they have a new wallpaper this time around. Let's just take the tour, because I think there is something new this time around. Anyway, let's learn about the key features in GNOME OS 46. So here we are. We can start the tour, we can get an overview, press the super key to see open windows and apps. You can show apps to show your app page and not a whole lot of things around here, but, but again, this is just for testing. This is not a full-fledged operating system. So yeah, let's just move on. And we have just typed a search. So again, you just press the super key and you just start typing and you can get different settings. Keep on top with workspaces. Easily organize windows with the workspaces view. That's pretty good. And up and down for the overview. That's it. Okay, so this is the screen that we are greeted with when we log in after the welcome steps are done. And it looks pretty good. On the right hand side, you have your control panel. We're going to go through all of these in a little bit more depth. So this is the screenshot utility. This is the settings page. This is the lock button, the power off. This is for the volume. This is for the internet power mode and whether you want dark style to be enabled or disabled. And as you can see, the wallpaper changes along with it too. So that is pretty good. You have the notifications and the calendar and events over here. You can turn on do not disturb on or off. And on the left, you have your activities monitor where the more number of workspaces you have, it'll show up. And the current workspace is gonna be denoted by a pill instead of a dot. So. Let's go through things that are really new this time around because there are a lot of improvements. Let's just dive into a news article and let's just talk about what's here. So the first thing is that GNOME 46 beta includes many GNOME shell and Mutter improvements. So for example, they have improvements to high contrast and default styling, support for closing mount notifications when the drive gets disconnected, keyboard model configuration support header for notifications, and improved appearance of symbolic icons in notifications. In addition, the GNOME text editor app is now featured on the dash by default. Minimize applications animations has been improved, the switch's appearance was tweaked, and the handling of screencast failures was improved, and the dimming effect was kept for modal dialogues in the activities overview. GNOME extensions have also received a couple of improvements, and it's really good. And they also include effects for transient windows on Wayland, because they are using Wayland by default, and Wayland is really starting to push ahead. So it's really, really important. And there are other improvements too. You can check it out if you want to. Let's just go ahead. And they also have a global search mode for the Nautilus, which is the files app in GNOME 46, as we can see right here. This is the search everywhere icon. Let's just open files. I love that it looks like a cabinet almost. This should be the search button. Yeah, so th that's pretty intuitive. You have search and if you click on this, you change it to the path. That is pretty good. And while we're in GNOME files or Nautilus, as we like to call it, I can see the icons look really great. They have been the same since GNOME 40 was initially announced and you have this uh, this thing where you just, if you drag it and it becomes small, it just collapses into a bar on its own and you can just open it and close it. And if you click on here, you can get the other information about files. So as we can see, this should be 46.beta, which it is. And if you drag it outside, it's going to be its own separate bar. 
Let's move on to the next topic for today. GNOME 46 also adds a modernized properties dialog for GNOME Bluetooth, the ability to save difficulty levels in GNOME Sudoku, a preferences dialog for GNOME Music, drop shadow support for file property dialog icons in Nautilus. Let's just go through them one by one. So Bluetooth, GNOME Bluetooth should be over here. So I don't think I see Bluetooth, but it's weird. I don't see Bluetooth over here, but it, it should be in this page, right? But it says no Bluetooth found. Maybe it's because I'm inside a virtual machine. I GNOME Control Center also received improvements to the Wi-Fi page to also show the password when sharing the network via QR code. That is, if you want to disclose it to somebody, that's okay. The welcome page, to highlight the current active stylus, prefer the stylus over the eraser and pair only built-in pads with the tablets of the mouse page with a modern mouse test dialog. Now let's move on to the search and we're gonna go through search one by one. So search, I think, not, not really search, settings, I meant. And settings, I think, has been improved a lot. So we have the network dialog box over here, Bluetooth, we already checked out. Under displays, you have the option to change the refresh rate, scaling, and I don't think fractional scaling is enabled by default. You have sound, so you can change your output device, you can test them, you can check, you can change the balance, which is really, really interesting. I never really do that, but I guess if you have a faulty speaker, then you could do that. And if I'm talking very close to the microphone, you can see that it does take my input from the microphone and it passes it through to the VM. Pretty cool for boxes, actually. Input device is aligned in built-in audio, output input volume is maximum I guess and for power we have different modes so maybe because it's running inside a virtual machine it has only balanced and power saver but it also should have high performance if you are installing it on bare metal so that's something to be thinking about screen blank we can set the timer five minutes ten minutes whatever I like to keep it at never in multitasking we get hot corners and active screen edges so active screen edges would be just snapping a window to the left and right the animations are a little laggy this time, but uh, it's a VM. What, what, we, what, what can we do, right? And hot corner, I generally tend to disable this, but if you put your mouse cursor in one of the corners, you can activate some functionality, basically. And for workspaces, you get dynamic workspaces, fixed number of workspaces. I like to keep it a dynamic, which is the default option, by the way. But if you want a specific number of workspaces, you could do that too. You can also change it to be workspaces only on your primary monitor or on all displays. And you can also include apps from all workspaces or from the current workspace only when you're switching apps. So in the privacy and security tab, we have a couple of things grouped together, which is really good. And the privacy page now hides the non-functional microphone panel. The search page received a command line parameter for opening the search location dialog directly. So that would be in here. So you can app search. And the network panel, which is, I guess, somewhere around here, the network panel, now features missing VPN entries. So that is really cool. A lot of the apps have been grouped around here. So we have screen lock, automatic screen lock. You can have different options for uh, blanking the screen delay for automatic screen lock, automatic screen lock delay and lock screen notifications. And you also have location access, so you can turn on automatic device location. You can do it if you want it, but generally it is disabled. But if you want to have things like weather and stuff, that is something to be, that is something to be turned on. You also have file history and trash. So file history keeps a record of the files that you have used. The information is shared between apps, making it easier to find files that you might want to use. You can also disable this. You can delete the file duration history uh, by, by using this. I love that they have been highlighted with red so that they're easily visible. I love cues in UI UX when people actually think about the user and try to make it easier for them. Sometimes even if you don't know the language, if the UI is clear, you can easily understand where to go and what to do. Trash and temporary files. Trash and temporary files can sometimes include personal or sensitive information. Automatically deleting them can help you protect privacy. We can set it to automatically delete trash content. I generally keep it off to just to be safe. Sometimes if I delete something by mistake, I can always go back and recover. And you can also automatically delete temporary files, which I think is a really good thing. And the delete period can be set to an hour up to 30 days and you can also empty the trash from here which is a little 
deep inside the operating system, I believe, but it's okay. Uh, if you're in this page, you can go ahead and do it and you can also delete the temporary files. So I think privacy and security page received a good overhaul and you also have devices, which so camera is the only thing that is connected to here and you can have camera access given to some of the apps that use camera. For example, the camera app. Next up is the image viewer. I'm not really sure if you can search for the image viewer, but it's named loop, which is the image viewer over here. It has received a little bit of love and attention this time. So loop received a new keyboard shortcut for permanently deleting an image using shift plus delete a button to copy location coordinates and image properties, a support for opening images in new windows to occupy more screen space, and the ability to display the city if the image's location is less than 15 kilometers away instead of 100. Loop also received a new build option that allows system integrators to compile the app with optional X11 dependency support for using stacked card animations. That is pretty good. This is really technical, but that is pretty good. Next up is the GNOME Maps. Offer. I've always liked maps. I, I, I liked all the maps uh, in the world. I'm a big map fan. So GNOME Maps app received quite a few enhancements in this beta. I just hope it loads up in the time I'm speaking about it. It has a highway shield renderer using definitions from OSM Americana to render localized shields in some areas when using the experimental map view which now uses the new GNOME map style, the ability to show the system's clock format when sandboxed, as well as refreshed icons in the POI browser UI and a refreshed UI for favorites with an empty view. I really love GNOME maps. Let's just zoom into some of the places. Let's just go to Africa, where I guess none of the improvements uh, have been made because it's super Americanized. So if you are from America, you can enjoy maps. It would look really good. And you can do a lot of things here. You can change it to experimental map. You can go to your current location, which is disabled. So I can't really do that. Let's just see what happens if I click on it. It says to turn on location services. That is a good thing. It just doesn't point me to a default location. So that's something which is pretty good. So there are other improvements too. For example, we have the GNOME chess app, which has finally been upgraded from 43 to 46. So quite a lot of versions have been changed and there are chess related improvements, which if you know chess, go ahead. The GNOME Connections app received certificate verification for RDP, support for domains, improved onboarding text, improved app data for app stream, and the ability to change the icon when the certificate changes. GNOME Tweaks received support for searching for shell themes in the default GNOME shell theme directory, support for selecting an accelerated profile for touchpads, and a dark style background option in appearance. The audio amplification for over amplification and disabled touchpad while typing options have been removed. I'm not sure why, but okay. Last but not least, GNOME initial setup received improvements to avatar generation, which I didn't really see uh, when I started up GNOME. So I'm not really sure what this, I was actually thinking about this when setting up the operating system, but I didn't see it. And the welcome page, GNOME text editor, now checks for files on disk before restoring drafts to avoid displaying deleted files. And the XDG desktop portal GNOME got a redesigned screencast screen picker. Now speaking of wallpapers, let's just go ahead and check out what wallpapers there are because we're almost at the end of the video. Okay, let's just close these and uh, let's go over to appearance. So first you get the default mode and dark mode and you can add your picture and I see quite a few new wallpapers this time around. This is the default one. I guess a few of these were there the last time I checked and this is really interesting. That's simplistic. That's cool. And I believe that if you were in dark style, it would look even better. Oh my God, this looks so much better. Let's check this one out. Okay. For some reason, wallpapers in dark mode look so much better than wallpapers in light mode. I'm not sure if this is just me or if this is a universally considered opinion, but, it, but the wallpapers look really good. Wow. This, I think I'm going to stick with this one with the thumb for the thumbnail and I'm going to go with dark style. I mean, this looks good too, but the dark style just looks like something else, man. Totally different level. There are others too, and all of these are very pretty. I think I'm going to stick with this for the video. What do you think, guys? This looks absolutely amazing. And with that, 
I thank you for watching this video and I'll catch you on the next side. Peace.